welcome you all to marine mechanic videos and today we are going to talk about the noise code it's one of the recent addition to the codes and conventions by IMO so the action date is 1st of July 2014 all new vessels must comply with this code so IMO that is International Maritime Organization recognizes that high noise levels would definitely affect the seafarer's health and in turn it would impair the safety of the ship. Thus the purpose is to limit the noise levels or and to reduce the seafarer's exposure to it, especially the engine room staff. So by 1st of from 1st July 2014 it is mandatory for all new ships. So the code is consisting of uh, various chapters as usual starting from general to appendix so I have just enacted important regulations or whatever uh, is applicable for us so management responsibilities which means a ship owner or a vessel manager has these responsibilities to be complied with in respect to noise code so before anybody joins a ship for the first time and every time or during regular intervals the management should inform that there is the risk of loss of hearing due to severe noise levels in the engine room so the first point is the management should inform the risk of loss of hearing due to during initial employment and then thereafter during regular intervals and to provide instruction in hazards of noise exposure obviously we know that if our ears are exposed to high noise levels it's going to get bad day by day so the management should be responsible enough that they have to say all these hazards due to high pitch noise and then ask everybody who joins the vessel to take sufficient precautions and in the engine room or anywhere in the ship if the noise level is more than 85 decibels there should be sufficient warning signs at the entrance of these places or the entry to such places should be controlled and it is also one important responsibility of the management is to provide sufficient hearing protection in the form of earmuffs or earplugs on individual basis there is no sharing allowed each and everybody on board should have sufficient earmuffs or earplugs during working in the areas of high noise levels and there is one more important point which we have to look at is the hearing conservation plans at no cost of the seafarer I'll talk about the hearing conservation plan later in this video let's now talk about the exposure limits if all the regulations as per the noise code has been complied then a seafarer will not be able to exceed 80 decibels each day in or in any continuous 24 hours equivalent noise exposure so as we have seen earlier the hearing conservation tests or the plans what are they it is initial and periodic audiometric tests hopefully you all must have attended the medicals and during the medicals they would have performed the audiometry test for engineers especially by the help of tuning forks so that should be done initially before joining the vessel or even after joining the vessel periodically once you sign off or let's say every six months depending upon the administration training on proper usage of earmuffs and earplugs most of us know how to use the earmuffs and earplugs however there has to be special safety precautions taken if you use earplugs especially with regards to hygiene so training on regular basis has to be provided on these two accessories now hygiene kit for earmuffs this is one thing which most of the companies don't provide these hygiene kits are very essential for your earmuffs which means if your cushion on your earmuffs gets hardened up or it becomes sweaty or it becomes soaked up with some oil or anything you have to replace the cushions and the pads with a new hygiene kit there must be kit available on board so that you can change and reuse the same old earmuff then once the audiometric trusts have been conducted these results have to be maintained and recorded 
now sound insulation index what are they so airborne sound insulation properties of bulkheads and decks must comply with iso standards of weighted sound reduction index like let's say sound has the property of propagating through bulkheads and decks so each and every material of a bulkhead and deck have a sound reduction index so we are not going to go in the formulas and then understand all these stuffs however every bulkhead let's say i'm going to shout at uh, let's say 60 decibels in this room the guy who is sitting in the next room probably will hear at 50 decibels not at 60 decibels so the bulkhead is having some sound reduction index so the airborne insulation properties of bulkheads and decks must comply with the iso standards and the periodic noise survey report is mandatory based on the satisfaction of the administration so let's say once in every five years or once in every 10 years noise survey has to be made on board every ship and then a report has to be compiled and the report has to be analyzed so if particular area is having excessive noise or if the bulkheads sound reduction index has reduced then it has to be brought it back to a uh, near original condition so that can be referred or the information can be arrived from noise survey report next is all about noise reduction measures so as we all know the exhaust and intake silences and say the main engine exhaust gas pipes and uh, your diesel generator exhaust gas pipes in fact some auxiliary boilers even have silencers or mufflers and intake silences especially in case of forced draft fan or induced draft fan in your boilers and if the machinery space let's say you have huge generators of 13 megawatts or 15 megawatts or something then each generator or two generators will be kept in a separate room and other two will be kept in a separate room that is complete separation of machinery space where practicable with bulkheads next is sound absorbing materials that is if the surface is flat and smooth then the sound has a property to reflect from that surface so the bulkheads and decks where necessary will be cladded with sound absorbing materials next is accommodation must be stretched horizontally and vertically as far as possible from the source of noise this is just to ensure the sound reduction index is maximum in case of bulkheads and decks machinery casings must not form part of accommodation and then machinery enclosures you all must have seen any deck air compressor or service air compressors must be enclosed within an enclosure that is exclusively provided by the manufacturer to contain the noise so that's a technique for noise reduction now I'm going to introduce you all to a new equipment that is noise cancelling equipment which is known as anti-noise here it is so noise or a sound has a frequency and that frequency let's say it will be of some value and if we plot it there will be a graph for it and an anti-noise is an equipment which is going to generate an opposite frequency that is this is applicable only in case of low frequencies less than 500 Hertz so the signal from the anti noise that is the sound signal from the anti noise it's gonna cancel out your original frequency of your sound it's gonna act exactly 180 degrees opposite so in that case your noise levels will reduce a bit depending upon the frequency of the anti noise or the capability of the anti noise equipment so some of the famous anti-noise devices which are in use are active mufflers, active mounts, noise cancelling quiet zones or noise cancelling headsets. Out of all these noise cancelling headsets are very famous where we'll be having uh, a set of headphone or headsets in the steering gear room or near the main engine emergency maneuvering platform so that we can do the emergency maneuvering or emergency steering at ease without any noise interruption next is the famous poster released by the international maritime organizations that is with, with regards to the noise that is noise reduction or a man wearing earmuff that and the next is the very famous ambiguity that is earmuffs versus earplugs some claim that earmuffs are very effective some claim earplugs are effective 
However, these facts in front of you are right from IMO that they show the values of noise reduction. Let's say for example, if you wear an earplug in a place where there is 100 decibel of noise, the earplug would offer you a reduction of 20 decibel where you then have 80 decibel remaining. So these values are noise reduction index. So the earplug is capable of reducing 20 decibels. The EMF is capable of reducing 30 decibels. There are some designs where you can put in earplugs and then cover up with EMFs which is capable of offering you a reduction of 35 decibels. So these are called as insertion loss, that is noise insertion loss. Then with regards to warning signs, signs at the entry to a noisy room, example in English, 80 to 85 decibels is high noise level, use hearing protectors, which means it's not mandatory to use earmuffs or earplugs. However, it is advised. Then it comes to 85 to 110 decibels. This is dangerous noise and use of ear protectors, that is, let's say, uh, earmuffs or earplugs are definitely mandatory. And 110 to 115 decibels, that's a caution note, dangerous noise, use of earring protectors, mandatory. You have to stay only for short time. And any noise which is going to be greater than 115, that is 115 decibels, then it's excessively high noise level. Use of earring protectors are definite mandatory and no one should stay longer than 10 minutes. So the noise limits as stated by IMO. So with regards to noise limits, here is the complete list of values which IMO gives a guideline for the maximum limits of noise which have been measured over a period of time. So, and here is a graph which is uh, plotted between the duration of exposure and the noise level. Let's say you have 85 decibels and you can, let's say no protection is required below 85. That is why they have written it as no protection is required and zone E. So please refer to the noise code to know what is zone E. So if you have 85 decibels and less then definitely you need not wear ear protectors. However, if you want, it is advisable to wear to just safeguard your ears. Now, the point is how many hours you have been exposed to such noise levels. Let's say 85 decibels over a period of 8 hours and above. Yes, then definitely your earmuffs come into action. That time you have to definitely wear earmuffs. You can later refer this chart from the noise code from IMO. So, IMO has brought in such a beautiful uh, noise code. So let's make use of it. Let's wear earmuffs regularly and let's make use of the hygiene kit provided on board. Let's safeguard our ears.